So, Laurie, I think um, there's one final little narrative that we can wind into this before we conclude today. Uh, and I suspect that that is how the water um, ended up in front of the forecourt of the United of the USA Pavilion, as you you've said, because the water goes past Morningstar and it flows under Times Square. And um, I did an amazing interview with Dr. Denise Whitehouse uh, last week, last Friday, as it happens. Uh, and she told me the really fascinating story of the neons uh, lighting uh, above Morningstar, which I'd never heard before. Um, and I just thought that the forecourt um, finishing of the water circulation uh, would be a nice way for you to conclude this series. Right. Well, as we said before, it was a rather large fountain and uh, the section that you can see there is only about the top third of it. The rest of it, uh, out, of, out of the photo, is the section that is in the uh, American Pavilion forecourt. Now, that was quite a large forecourt there. <laughs> Um, and so this came in. Now the edge of the cascade was a, a zigzag um, geometric line. Um, parts of it had seats cast into the concrete that you could sit on. Other parts were low at uh, paving level so that you could actually walk off along a terrace or two and uh, cool off in the water. Um, so it's integrated that way with what the Americans have been doing uh, in terms of entertainment in front of their pavilion and their entrance to their pavilion as well. Um, and so there was no barrier between the two. Um, it flowed towards what we know as Times Square, which is all part of the whole forecourt under the neon ceiling, but it didn't actually go into that area there. Um, it stopped there. It was it's, uh, one entire system that, as I said, was... Uh, completely uh, filtered and, and what and it had to be um, for safety reasons, um, uh, you know, good quality water so that you could actually get in and, and uh, paddle in it and whatnot. So that was what it was, but nevertheless, because of the size of it and the fact that it did come in so far into the forecourt, um, it was really an important part of the visual experience of the, uh, the US Pavilion. And that was important because it signified that the United States um, fronts onto the North Pacific Ocean um, and therefore uh, why it is part of the Pacific precinct along with New Zealand and Japan and, and the Pacific nation islands as well. So just and, completes the picture. And in, in fact, behind me now, people can just get a glimpse of the American Pavilion and more importantly, that amazing uh, Nassau display. Uh, which ended up down at the Big Banana uh, after Expo 88. Um, and so I'm assuming that sort of, it sort of worked amazingly well together. The technology that Nassau was uh, showing with its uh, mini uh, space shuttle and the uh, flying uh, space-suited man and whatever else they had floating up uh, under their Nassau pavilion. Um, yeah, so it all works together, as you said, Everyone put a lot of thought uh, and worked together to get these precincts to uh, really fire up. That's right, yeah. And there's one thing we didn't actually discover that might be worthwhile talking about back in the Pacific Village. Yep. Um, the centre of all of those nations, their, their, their particular islands, um, was the volcanic stage, which was a synthetic mountain with caves and waterfalls and things. And uh, it was in the centre of all the Pacific Island uh, places. And then there was a, a small amphitheatre there because every 20 minutes for six months, the nations of the Pacific, um, they would do a, a performance coming out of the uh, caves and uh, down onto a little stage and, and uh, entertaining uh, visitors from with their culture. And so basically it was more than a mountain because behind it were all the dressing rooms and so on that, uh, that they use. So that was something that many people spent a lot of uh, uh, time um, listening to the, the different uh, music and, and the culture 
of all of those different nations that uh, were exhibiting around them. So it was a very popular place as the centre of the Pacific Village, right on the shoreline of the uh, Pacific Lagoon. And just another great story that makes the series, your series, this John Oxley series, uh, so entertaining and so, so worthwhile. And what I'll try and do uh, at the end of these various vignettes that'll end up, I will put pages, I'll scan in, and I'll put pages in of, out of your, uh, your paperwork that is going into the John Oxley Library. And Laurie, thank you again. Uh, very entertaining. Uh, my knowledge base uh, is building up, uh, and I'm sure that my uh, doctorate of Expo 88 is uh, well and truly on the way. Thanks again so much, Laurie. Thank you, Peter.